Hi! Hey, today I'm going to talk to you about blood blisters. Exciting, I know. Should you pop your blood blister? That's the question. Now, three weeks ago, I ran a marathon and it was awesome. And because of the condition I have with my feet, um, I was in pain most of the marathon, but I didn't think anything of it because it was normal. But when I got done with the marathon, um, I took my shoes off and I found that on my left foot I had this big old hunkin' blister, you know, way bigger than a quarter, probably 50 cent piece blister. Um, and then on my right foot I took that shoe off and it was even bigger, I had a blister, like two 50 cent pieces put together and it was a blood blister, it was huge. And I was like, oh, I hate blisters, because one, if you have a blister it's hard to run again, so to keep up your training and things like that, that's a bummer. Uh, but then you're just uncomfortable because you have to walk on that thing and if it pops it oozes all over and then the skin's weird and it has to grow back and it's a pain. Well in the past I've always popped my blisters right away. Um, just because I don't like dealing with it, I don't want it to tear, I just want to you know, take care of it and, and move on with my life. Sometimes in races I've had blisters mid-race and they've popped and I've glued them together or put a band-aid on them. Um, so I could keep running and that's what distance runners do. Uh, but this time I thought, let's do a little research and do it the right way. So I hopped on YouTube, I hopped on Google, and I looked up what should you do, uh, what do medical professors, professors, professionals think you should do with blood blisters. And the consensus was, if you can still move on it, if you can still tolerate it, don't pop it. Because what happens is that fluid that's inside the blister, it's going to keep everything clean and, and healthy while your new skin grows in underneath. So your skin's going to grow in, once that skin is kind of separated and you have that liquid in there, once that skin's separated, you're going to have new skin growing in underneath and that's going to take a few weeks. So don't pop it because it's just, you're, you don't have the risk of infection, you're not going to have weird things happen where it hurts and stinging all the time and stuff like that, so don't pop it. Now if it is bothering you, if it's not making it possible for you to move and it's just in a really bad spot, I'm talking about like blood blisters especially on your, your feet. Um, but it could also be on your hands. If you just can't do things and you need to get rid of that blister, then of course you do what everyone recommends. You get a sterilized needle and you puncture it. You let the liquid come out um, and you clean it up and, and then you're good to go. And that skin's going to eventually heal. And, and So keep it wrapped up if you can. Put a bandage on it or something and you're good to go. However, I found that even though my blister was on the bottom of my foot, let me see if I can show it to you. See that one? That's my blister. Oh, it's so beautiful. This is three weeks later, I didn't pop it. So I still have that blood blister. And the reason I have it is I found I could even run on it. It wasn't so like bubbly or whatever that I couldn't run on it. And so I kept it. And the cool thing is as time has gone on, <clears throat> it's become less and less of a nuisance. It was a little bit annoying before, and I couldn't do things that required a lot of mobility. I'm not playing basketball and, and things like that right now because I don't want to be shifting all over in my shoes. But for just running and normal uh, day stuff, um, it was fine, so I kept it. And what I found with my blister is it's starting to dry out and um, the skin underneath is almost there. So I'm going to probably, um, I don't know if I'll we'll ever puncture it. You can just let it go until things come. Eventually it's going to rip and tear and that outer layer is going to come off and the layer underneath is going to grow in and it'll be fine. Um, but you do have that blood underneath that will eventually harden and be nasty and stuff. So I think in another week or two I probably will puncture it and then uh, I'll empty it out, get rid of the outer skin and let it heal up. Um, but I'm so nervous to do that because I love that weekend run and I'm nervous about getting that skin off and having it, you know, exposed and not being able to put in a lot of miles. So for right now it's working. I'm going to milk it as long as possible and you can do that. So hope this video was helpful. If it was, uh, please give me a like and um, if you've been watching some of these other videos and you think they're useful, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification button so that it'll tell you when my new videos come out. Typically they come out every weekend. I, I was shooting for Tuesday before but now I'm just looking for the weekend because that's when I'm home. That's when I film videos. So um, have a great week. Bye.